We're going to watch Scott Forrester, ATU-757. He's the light rail executive board officer, very articulate gentleman. And uh, I was waiting for ATU to put up the video. Uh, last month, they actually put up their own videos. But I don't see the video, and I'm tired of waiting. Although, I, yeah, it's better that I do it anyway, because I get to do my commentary when I do it. So let's watch Scott and see what he has to say. And I'll always put in my very... Insightful commentary, of course. My name is Anthony Forster. I'm the executive board officer for light rail transportation for ATU-757. TriMet is a large transit agency. Um, in fact, our, one of our smallest garages is about the size of Eugene, the second largest transit agency in <coughs> Portland. Being such, it takes a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of money, with the collaboration of a lot of people to make change happen. The bar where this agency needs to be has been raised by Mr. Kelsey. Moving forward, it's going to be safer, better trained, and better educated with its operators, with its passengers, with, with everyone involved. Okay, so we already, we already have a clue that uh, Anthony is cheerleading for Doug, and that's not necessarily bad. I mean, you know, management, it would be a great world if management could get along with uh, workforce. I'm, you know, the philosophy has always been make sure you hire managers that don't get along with the workforce. Any managers that get along with the workforce usually get the boot. I mean, try to, that's been the policy up till now. Maybe something's changed with Mr. Kelsey. He is an outsider from Canada. Uh, we've already gone over his history. So we already see uh, Anthony is uh, cheerleading for Doug Kelsey. Let's see where he goes with it. Let me say also that Mr. Kelsey is a man true to his word. Um, he said that I, would, that I would be involved with these changes, with these meetings, and I have been. I've been invited to more meetings than I actually expected to be, so I do appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see that Doug is up in the right-hand corner of the picture. He's up there. Watch, watch his facial expressions as Anthony talks. So, so here's <laughs> Anthony's really laying it on thick so far. Let's, see, let's keep going. Much. Um, and uh, let me also say that um, I appreciate uh, <laughs> Director Stovall when he said that the safety audit was not just a critique, critique of operators. It's a system issue, and it is a system issue. Um, and also the, 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 the questions that you guys ask about our testimonies, it's always encouraging to hear that you're <coughs> listening, that you, that you care. Um, it really does speak to that. <laughs> yeah, they care, all right, yeah. Uh, well, you know, he's playing the game. You, you see this with Opal, too. I mean, it's true, you know. He, if you don't play the game along with them, they're not going to cooperate with you because they can do that. They control the process. The board and McFarland and his cronies control the process, and, and they're unaccountable. There's no way you can reach these people, okay? They're not, they're not reachable by ordinary methods. And if you're not nice to them, they just say, fuck you, you're not nice, we're not going to listen to you. Well, they don't listen to anybody, but I can understand why people play their game because at least maybe, maybe, maybe you'll have a shot at getting through to them, but I um, personally, no, you're not gonna. They're not gonna go with you. The only person that board cares about is Neil McFarland, and Neil McFarland has his agenda, and it's not the workers. So, with the, with the reasoning going into my head, I go into these meetings, and I hear that 50% of rule violations for rail operators are by rail operators that have been here less than two years. That says to me we need more training. That was fine under the system that we've been working under, but it isn't fine under the system that we're looking to be at into the future. It's all, about, it's all about investment in the initial operators at TriMet. Give them the tools that they need to succeed in this brave new rail world that we're creating because that's what we need to do. And it, because it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work and a lot of money with collaboration, and I think we can get there. Today, however, we're still figuring out how to get there, how to get to this new place. My concern today is that managers are now disciplining on a whole new level that they've never done before. Uh, there, there you go. There's the example. Okay, the, it's not what they say. You, you don't. Whatever they say doesn't mean anything. It's what they do that counts. And you'll see there's this huge disconnect between what they say and what they do. I mean, they remind me of Hillary Clinton. I keep, hate to keep bringing her up, but she's a perfect example of the type of thinking that you see. She says everything right, and then she does everything wrong, and that's that's kind of this neoliberal think think thing. They just think what do you call it? The group think. You know, they know how to speak the language, but they don't. But they have their own agendas, and so here you see they're now having all kinds of penalties. I mean, I wonder if these organizations realize that when they penalize their employees they've created a morale problem and once you have a morale problem 
it's not easy to get out of it, okay? As a former employee, I can tell you how many times my morale was ruined, and I slowly, slowly, slowly became more and more and more anti trimet management as time went on. And I know I know it's not me, it's just me that does that. That's everybody. So so now we hear from him that they have a whole new level of penalty. Well, I don't know if penalizing people really is the way to go in this particular field. I, I mean, I never did understand the whole idea, but you did something wrong, you're going you're gonna to suspend you. Don't you think it's better to try to, I don't think anybody violates these rules on purpose, do they? I mean, if they do, they should be fired. You know, it's humans. Humans make human errors. There's not any new help for anyone. There are no, there's no new training. There's no fixes to the alignment. Schedules are so tight that you need a tablet in each train that has the same clock down to the nanosecond to hopefully they can keep on time. And that right there is the essence of the problem. That's not just on rail, that's on bus. That is the essence of the inhumanity of public transportation. See, when neoliberalism took over public transportation, all of a sudden things changed in the philosophy of public transportation. All of a sudden it became, how hard can we work our employees? How hard can we make them work before we give them a break? Let's, let's maximize their labor as far as we can as far as we can do it. Let's pack as many people into our buses as tra and trains as possible. This is the neoliberal philosophy that has destroyed public transportation. And if you read the recent articles, nobody's using public transportation anymore. And you know all these different publications, they're all part of the public transportation industrial complex and they basically are figments, they're also tentacles of the actual public transportation agencies, all of these periodicals, people like Jared Walker, Streets Blog, all of them are part of the public transportation industrial complex, and they go on and say things like, well, uh, they haven't reorganized their bus systems, this is why people aren't writing it. No, people aren't writing it because it's terrible, it's abusive, it's inhumane, it's dirty, it's packed, we can't get picked up. Nobody in their right mind is going to put up with that, okay? That's why people aren't riding public transportation in this country. Now, you don't hear anybody saying that but an obscure blogger like me because all these professionals don't want to admit the truth. They want to paint this picture that somehow public transportation is this beautiful thing. It's not a beautiful thing. It's an ugly, abusive, inhumane industrial complex. You're giving operators new distractions, not new fixes. New operators are being disciplined more than ever before, but nothing has been done to give them any other tools to safely operate the train today more than a month ago. It's a well-known fact, and I've published it numerous times, that public transportation, work in public transportation in the United States of America is the most depressing job in the country. The most, get that through your head, you can look it up, just Google it, most, public transportation depression. You'll see that it's the number one depression job in the United States of America. And you see what he's saying here is, oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to discipline you. you, you ran the light, okay, oh you didn't stop on the line. Oh, you didn't close the doors on the right side. These are all human errors, okay? These are human beings here you're dealing with. They're not, they're not machines, okay? So you go ahead, go ahead and discipline your employees, and then you want them to be dedicated? Well, maybe some of them will be, but a lot of them aren't going to be, and they're not going to be showing up for work. Can you, do you understand why people don't want this job? It's not just a try that people don't want this job. Nowhere. Nobody wants to work in this field because it, they know what it is now. Social media has exposed the truth about this. It's not what this job used to be. Now you're, you're giving up your whole life for a very questionable career. Two months ago. No more tools than six months ago, but you're disciplining them more. One of the most concerning things to me is a working wage agreement that was disregarded earlier this month when an operator had their, their probation extended. I wasn't talked to. I wasn't copied on the letter. There was nothing done to, to communicate with me uh, on how we could best resolve this situation that, that, that arose. That is not how we need to move together. We need to work on our communication, and we need to move together as we move forward, making a new system. Thank you. Well, he, he did a very, very politically astute presentation there. He made sure that he stroked the managers. He said nice things, which you have to do with these people because that's how they are. You know, the, you have this unaccountable board with this unaccountable general manager. These people rule TriMet. It's like a little country. And he's like a king. He's an emperor. McFarlane is an emperor with, with a puppet board. And anybody that doesn't realize that's a puppet board is an idiot and hasn't been paying attention at all. That's a bunch of puppets. 
They don't think for themselves. They do whatever he says. So he, he, he presented it very well. He stroked a few egos, and then he came and told them the real truth. But he's played their game. That's what you got to do with these childish, arrogant directors and managers. You're not nice to them. They don't play your game.